Now, once again, Raymond Arroyo. Welcome back to The World Over. For me and many fellow New Orleanians, no one played clarinet quite like Pete Fountain. He was a jazz legend from a city that has produced more than its share of greats. Not only was he a peerless musician, Pete was among the greatest ambassadors New Orleans has ever known. Pierre Dewey LaFontaine Jr. passed away on August 6th at the age of 86. He recorded well over 100 albums and was a staple of the world famous New Orleans Jazz Fest. I visited him back home many years ago when he still had a jazz club downtown. We spoke about his life, his career, his faith, and performing for a pope. Here's our classic World Over tribute to the incomparable Pete Fountain. In New Orleans, you can find rock and roll and R&B, but if you really want to hear authentic New Orleans Dixieland jazz, you've got to go to Pete's place. For more than half a century, Pete Fountain has been regaling this town with his own unique style of clarinet playing. In the process, he's become the de facto ambassador of the city, a legend, and Mr. New Orleans. He's also a Roman Catholic. Where did the clarinet playing start from? You, this started as a medical condition, right? I, I, I had weak lungs as a kid. It sounds like, you know, a real far out story. But I had weak lungs as a kid, real skinny. <laughs> you can see what happens when you start eating on here. That's right. But uh, the uh, real skinny, weak lungs, and the doctor says, take him to the country and uh, let him uh, breathe some pine air with the pine trees, and so my, my, my dad is people all, all from Biloxi, so I used to go there every summer. But then he said, if that don't work, get him a, a wind instrument, uh, an instrument. Well, when they said instrument, I said, oh good, I can play the drums. And, <laughs> and the doctor said, no, 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 no. You got something that you can blow in. So at that time, you know, as a kid, I used to listen to Benny Goodman on the radio. And, uh, and I enjoyed the sound of the clarinet. So, told my dad, you know, go out and get a, get a clarinet. So he got a clarinet. I was nine years old. And by the time I was 14, I was playing uh, in clubs, nightclubs. You know. Unbelievable. Now, your father was musical. My, my, my father played uh, drums and also a little country fiddle. You think that rubbed off? Uh, I think so. I think through him, you know. Now, you quit school very I, young. Tell me how that happened. I, uh, I was in my senior year, and there was a gentleman, uh, there was the, the uh, he taught English, uh, named Matt Ballanton. And uh, a big thing in him, he says, you know, nobody sleeps in my class. I don't care what you do, just don't sleep in my class. So I fell asleep in the class. Oh, so he, the, the man was, was a gorilla. He, he was a big guy. I mean, six, six, something like that, and 300 pounds. So he picked me, picked me right out the desk, you know. They put you by the collar and say, you know, what are you doing sleeping in my class? Yeah. Then he drops you, you know. Oh, that wakes you up. So I said, I work at night. He said, what, what you doing at night? I said, I, I work on Bourbon Street. I said, I, I play from nine to three in the morning. And he says, can I ask you, what, what, what do you make? I said, I'm, I make $125 a week. He says, that's more than I make. Pack your books, go get some sleep. Go home and get some rest. So I said, my mother's gonna kill me. So he says, <laughs> he said no, I'll write a note. So he wrote a note. Let, let this boy get some rest because, you know. So I, I later on, and I that got- that was it? You never went back to school? I never, never I turned my books in and went back. Uh, went, uh, worked every night since then. If you hadn't been a clarinetist, what, what would you have been, Pete? Well, uh, I had one thing, I did see, my daddy uh, drove a beer truck for uh, uh, Dixie Brewery. Dixie Beer, yeah. Now, if, if, it's like a father-son thing. If, if I wanted to take over his route when, when he retired, I could. <laughs> Some nights I wish I would have. <laughs> Why? Because you know when, when, yeah, when the read would don't work oh. oh, But boy. but otherwise you know that would that, I don't know what I've done you know besides I've always wanted to build something you know or just get into for a while I, in high, high school I was getting into architect so I I, I enjoyed that so maybe I'd have I'd have drifted into architect just into that uh, building building houses I I love I love to get into that really. Now, you've described what you do as swing jazz, a combo of... Swing and Dixie. Dixie. Yeah. Swing, swing and Dixie. What does that mean? It's like the, it's the swing with a Dixieland flavor. 
you, you, I read an article where you described this as a, a, almost a fusion of Dixie, jazz, and spiritual music. Spiritual or swing, too. That's four things you can, you can put in together. How did but we, we do a lot of spiritual. Uh, we do Closer Walk, uh, Amazing Grace. Right. Started that years ago. That was my biggest single. Right. Just well, a Closer, closer walk, walk with me. town is so Catholic. I mean, you bump into, you turn oh, into the trash cans Catholic. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they, they, I call them fish eaters. <laughs> yeah, that's, fish that's, eaters. that's what we are, fish eaters. People say, what, what are you? I said, I'm a fish eater. <laughs> so what's a fish eater? I said, it's a Catholic. Catholic. <laughs> Every Friday. Every Friday. How, how did that Catholicism affect your work and the choices of music and the way you approach your jazz? My mother used to always want me to make mass on Sunday, so I did. So it, 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 it's part of part of my life down here. Rubbed off. Everybody's, yeah. Tell me, the, uh, in 1987, the Pope came here. Yep. You played for him. Yep. yep. What, that was that was that was, was that, like? that was unbelievable. But it's, it's still, when I when I think about it, you know, the hair stands up on the back of your neck because it's it, it was it was just amazing. I'm playing there and I'm looking at him, you know, and he uh, he was just sitting there taking it all in, listening to it. You know, and after, after, after I quit playing, I looked at him and he went, no, no, <laughs> no, he no, he didn't do that. No, 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 no. I have always heard about the beautiful music of New Orleans. Today, I have been able to hear it and admire it personally. You've said, God gave me the talent and a good ear, and, and I took it from there. How much... For those who have talent, those watching, who have an interest in, in, in music, in drama, in painting, what would you say to them about that God-given talent and their responsibility? Well, I could tell you what happens with me. Right. Every time I think I'm going to get into something else, like I, I bought a hotel once mm -hmm. in, on the Mississippi coast, which I thought maybe I'd just be able to play once a month, mm -hmm. he zaps me. He <laughs> says, no, I gave you the talent, you're going to play it. And I realized that about three or four different times I went, the World's Fair, right. then I did a thing called Peter's Wieners, I thought everybody would eat. Yeah, <laughs> I thought that was going to go. But he always says, well, you know, you, you, yeah, I gave you this talent, use it. <laughs> and I've been, I've been <laughs> tooting ever since. I've, I get paid by the note now, you know. I, but it's it's amazing what the, if the, whoever has talent, just just go with it, you know. Like, because he gives it to you, you know. When he gives it to you, and they don't give it to too many people. Your wife has been with you Beverly, for almost yeah. 50 years now. Yeah, October 27th, uh, be 49 or 50, pretty close. Wow. How 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 she put up with me? I don't know. The the, the girl the girl is a, a saint, really. <laughs> If you are known for anything nationally and internationally, it's the Lawrence Welk Show from 57 to 59 and The Tonight Show. Yeah, The Tonight Show was for, for 50, 58 times yeah. on, on, on Johnny. Amazing. And uh, that, that was more like my second life, uh, second time around. You Tell know? me about Welk, what that was like. Oh, well, it was fun. He's a very religious man and didn't drink a bit. <laughs> There's a funny story about a bubble machine, though. Oh, yeah. Tell oh. me about that one. Well, when you, when you wasn't doing anything uh, that some of the concerts around the country would be, uh, would, would have, they would, you would have to uh, maybe do the bubble machine. And Dick Dale was, was doing it at that time. Right. And something happened to him. He, he couldn't go on the concert tour. So they said, well, Pete, you in charge of the bubble machine. And no the problem. Walk, of course, no no problem. The yeah, no problem, because when, when the thing opens and the curtain opens, and and the bubble machine start. Well, I, I, you were supposed to just put a little little spoonful of this fluid in there. Fluid in the, in the machine, and it did it. You know, just a little spoonful. So I, I poured it in, <laughs> and boy, it started. And when it started, it just wouldn't stop. And the guys 
to get you on the, your, your uniform, you know, and your, your suit. And they were going like this. And bar, that was it. It was like Niagara. They, that was it. They, I didn't, I didn't, they let me on a machine. I'm on. <laughs> As you get older, do you reflect on faith more? Does that play a greater role in what you do? Yeah, I think so. Uh, the, uh, like I said, the old man's been good to me. Yeah. And uh, uh, I have to be good to him. How do you want to be remembered, Pete? Oh. Uh, uh, what do you want written on the headstone? Oh, okay. Here lies Pete with his dancing feet who love to live and live to eat. <laughs> <laughs> and, okay. right, and right at the bottom it says, what are you looking at? <laughs> May Pete Fountain rest in peace. His closer walk with thee is so special. I'll post it on my Facebook and Twitter pages for you. It's something you need to hear.